Hello and welcome to Diplomata. I'm Francis Suni. The work in the health sector in countries like Timor-Leste many times can be challenging. Setting policies and priorities, providing good quality health services, as well as eradicating some of the diseases that have claimed many lives are some of the toughest jobs the people who work in this particular area have to do. Timor-Leste's Ministry of Health has done a great job, despite many difficulties it has had to face from time to time. Fortunately, the Ministry has not been alone. It has worked alongside a number of partners, with one of the closest ones being the United Nations World Health Organization. In this episode, we'll hear from the diplomat who is tasked by the UN to lead the WHO team in Dili. Thank you very much for giving you time to be part of this program. To start, perhaps, um, if you could tell us who you are and what you do in Timor Leste. Thank you very much first for this opportunity to be part of your program. I have seen some of the episodes uh, which talk about all the diplomats here in Timor Leste. So my name is Dr. Rajesh Pandav. I am the WHO representative in Timor Leste. And I have been the WHO representative since 2015. Where were you before, before being posted in Timor Leste? So actually, I have been here from 2011. And from 2011 to 15, I was the health policy advisor in the same WHO country office. And before that, I have been in WHO office of Maldives and then before that in the regional office of WHO Southeast Asia region. The head of the head office of WHO Southeast Asia region is in India. What brought you to, to the UN, to WHO? Yeah, so I started my career in public health in 1989, working first on iodine deficiency disorders. After that, uh, I worked in an Indo-US cross-national study on dementia, where we compared a population, rural population in Ballabgad, India, a small rural community, to a rural community in uh, U United States of America. So that was a 10-year study. And after that, I went to the United States to uh, study in public health. So when I finished my public health in the United States, I wanted to come back to our region, our country, and was looking for opportunities in the area of public health. And the World Health Organization is the lead technical agency in the United Nations. It's the coordinating uh, authority for international health and public health matters. And public health always interested me. So that's why I wanted to join World Health Organization because it gives me an opportunity to work on a broader scale on population based. I also did clinical practice for a few years after I graduated, but public health allows me to work uh, on, in big population and make a difference in a bigger population. Why are you interested in the health sector? What really motivated you uh, when you did your study to, to do health rather than other areas of study? For uh, I studied my medicine in, uh, in India in Grand Medical College. And one of the reasons I studied is basically in India at that time, people who wanted to either become a doctor or an engineer. And my two elder brothers uh, have also been doctors. So I followed that footsteps when I did my graduation in medicine. But my interest in public health developed after my initial work in this area of uh, dementia. Dementia is a loss of memory. Uh, in elderly population. So that interested me more uh, from, because that was more a research area and public health was more practice area. So that's how I moved to public health and therefore the interest in working with WHO. How about the influence of your parents when, um, when you sort of in the process of deciding to, to become a, uh, a professional in, in the health area? Yeah, so I am the youngest in the family, of a large family of six people, you know. So uh, I looked up more to my brothers who were 
my, the difference between the age between my eldest brother and me is 20 years so it was like a father figure to me okay my parents said my father had already retired by that time when but uh, they inspired me and they 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 wanted me also to become a doctor motivated me and my brothers also played a big hand in uh, make, uh, taking up the profession of medicine when you moved out of india uh, to other countries, what difference did you see and is that somehow influencing your decision to work on a, a broader sort of uh, network of the UN? Yes, so the first time I went out uh, was during my the study on the work which I did on with you, United States, the India-US comparison for dementia. I went on work for one month and then after the project got completed, I studied in the United States for two years and worked for two years in the United States. But I wanted to bring the public health expertise which I got from education in the United States back to my country and the region which we stay. So the, uh, the more I felt that I could make a bigger difference by coming back to my region from the skills I have achieved uh, during my studies in uh, Pittsburgh in the United States. Tell us about your previous postings. Uh, what's different from your current posting in Timor-Leste? Yeah, so the first posting in WHO was in the regional office where I was part of the mental health department. So their focus was more on in the area of mental health. So that was for around four years. And then I went to the country office in Maldives as the medical officer public health so that my area of work was much broader and it was a smaller office you know just two technical people the WHO representative and me so I got to handle a number of public health areas so my scope of work increased and then I applied for a position in Timor-Leste which was a senior position of a health policy advisor which uh, allowed me to make a uh, policy advice on a technical level or a much broader level. So that's how I then chose this. And then after I became the health policy advisor here, then other career opportunities was to become head of the office. So uh, I applied, I passed the test and I was selected to be the WHO representative here. So my work has gone from uh, just mental health to broader public health to policy area now uh, in, in Timor Leste initially and now much broader in terms of supporting being part of the United Nations but supporting the Ministry of Health and Government on broader public health area uh, and improving public health here in Timor Leste. You have been in Timor quite long enough. Um, have you been able to, to go around um, places in Timor-Leste? Yes, uh, because of my work I have travelled to all the municipalities. Uh, I, my, my, our work mostly at the centre level with the Ministry of Health, but certain programmes like the immunisation programme and the neglected tropical disease programme, I have to travel uh, within the districts to oversee our work. From all your all your travels to the district, what do you think is the, the biggest challenge for Timor-Leste in terms of uh, health uh, in Timor-Leste? Yeah, so I want the health is uh, not just particularly uh, only disease and infirmity. So if you look at the, the definition of health, it's a complete state of physical, mental and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So it, it has mental, social well-being. So one of the most important area is social determinants of health. So access to uh, roads, water, sanitation, electricity, these affect health a lot. When In my earlier days when I came here, uh, that was the time when electricity actually was starting to improve. Uh, and uh, go reached out to cities. That has an impact on health because the community health center, the health post, need proper electricity, water, 
sanitation to be able to deliver the health services so that that's the first point the second is also i saw that uh, malnutrition also was a big issue and uh, also other areas were like the public health areas preventive areas the immunization rates were also low and uh, Uh, people had to travel along to reach the health services uh, almost 2 to 1 and a half hours to reach a health post or a community health center so these were the some of the challenges which i found which were there and uh, during my travels in chimal list and you are obviously working with uh, a range of staff from from different countries uh, especially from uh, from timor leste um How do you find working with uh, your counterparts, especially the Timorese uh, staff in in the office? Yes. So uh, as uh, Timor Leste has been developing after its independence, uh, the national staff also uh, got exposure slowly, and they have built their capacity, and I have facilitated their environment to for them to learn more and deliver more. So they have been. very crucial uh, in delivering our support to the ministry of health so and many staff have progressed from uh, positions uh, to higher positions uh, within the country office so uh, tried to build a team of both timorese uh, nationals and also international professionals to support ministry of health but also to mentor the national professionals in our office how is the family life uh, when you talk about heads of offices people always think about busy schedule meetings uh, programs projects um how is family yeah so my wife also stays here with me uh, she is an economist but also works in the area of health and so although she is not working here in timor leste she works out of here because with the good internet connection and others she works in the area of health and advises many uh, governments also works with civil society organizations so obviously because of that she is kept busy uh, okay by herself and therefore uh, i have to spend a lot of time in the office obviously i have to find a balance between <laughs> work and uh, home life so uh, it has worked very well she has also enjoyed her stay in Timor Leste she has learned much more Tetun than me and she interacts with, in Tetun with a lot of uh, people we have in the house but in general in the community and how do you stay in contact with uh, your family relatives back in india yeah so earlier in 2011 when i came the phone calls were very expensive and the internet connectivity was not good so sometimes we have to route our phone calls through our regional office to reach our family but now connectivity has improved there is whatsapp there is skype so we talk on a regular basis and good thing is my family every year some member of the family has visited in timor leste uh, my both my parents have expired but my wife's parents they came regularly for 7 years uh, every year in timor leste and they enjoyed their stay here but now they have become a bit older and so traveling for them is difficult and just to finish this um, session of interview what's unique about being a un representative a, a un diplomat uh, representing the un in in, in timor leste what do you think the unique thing is that uh, uh, in timor leste united nations uh, has has participated in building of the nation here and uh, therefore to be part of the area of world health organization which support in the area of health uh, and it's a country which is developing so uh, who and as a who head i can contribute towards improving the health of the people here in timor leste so that's a fine unique opportunity for uh, to be in a young country and to be able to contribute towards improvement of health of the people here in Timor Leste. Thank you very much for staying you're still with me on Diplomata. 
with WHO's work in Timor, what are you working on currently? Yeah, so WHO's overall mission is to promote health, keep the world safe and serve the vulnerable. So that mission applies also to the country office. So currently we support the Ministry of Health uh, through various programs in different areas. So one area which uh, we support is in the area of policy and planning. So development of several policies and strategic plans in the area of health like non-communicable disease strategy, mental health strategy, strategies for HIV, TB, malaria, strategies for human resource for health and health financing strategy so as an example. Then we also support the Ministry of Health to strengthen their health information systems. Okay, And then also capacity building in all these areas of the Ministry of Health staff and also uh, in different other technical areas, for example, maternal and child health, uh, and also malnutrition to address uh, development of guidelines for, for example, food-based dietary guidelines, uh, guidelines for develop uh, severe acute malnutrition treatment, then multi-sectoral action plan for non-communicable diseases. So non-communicable diseases are like heart disease, lung disease, you know, cancer, diabetes and then addressing the risk factors of these like physical inactivity, lack of healthy diet, uh, tobacco, smoking, then alcohol intake. So behavioral factors also. So we support in the uh, training of health professionals and to promote healthy activities. Uh, so th in short, this is some of the key areas. So policy and strategy, health information systems, capacity building, uh, development of various guidelines and help support programs like uh, immunization program. We work a lot in not only in uh, Delhi municipality but all the municipalities. We have staff place in municipalities. Another big program is neglected tropical diseases which is lymphatic fire areas is yours uh, where we are supported through funding from Koika here in Timor Leste and it's a five-year project towards elimination of lymphatic fibrosis and yours. So these are some of the some of the programs that we support. With the key areas you have just mentioned, how did you define those key areas? Do you decide does WHO decide all this by itself or do you work with the ministry to, to decide to how does it work when it comes to setting the priorities? So WHO is a technical agency and it's a secretariat of member states. So there is, every year there is a World Health Assembly and which there are areas identified for work uh, by member states and for WHO to support. Then uh, Timor-Leste falls under the Southeast Asia region. So there is uh, 11 countries in the Southeast Asia region and we have the regional committee where the ministers attend this meeting and they decide the priority areas for support. Then at the country level, we have a country cooperation strategy, which is developed through dialogue with Ministry of Health and other partners who are working in the area of health. Then is the biennial programs, that is activities which we done every two years. And these are decided based on the discussion with Ministry of Health based on what they agreed upon at the global level, at the regional level and what are the priorities for the country. Uh, based on that, we have a discussion and we agree on certain uh, out outputs, what we need to, WHO needs to deliver and some activities. So this is done in close consultation with Ministry of Health. Uh, so nothing which we do is without consultation with the primarily with the Ministry of Health. Timor Leste has its uh, the strategic plan for its national development. How do you ensure that the the work WHO is doing is in line with what is outlined in the uh, in that strategic plan? Yeah. So um, Timor Leste has a overall national strategic development plan for 20 years, 2011 to 2030. And there is a national health strategic plan for 2011 to 30. 
So the priorities identified in the plan are the basis of our WHO country cooperation strategy and our biennial work plans and activities come from the country cooperation strategy which are aligned. So when we develop a biennial work plan, we have to show its alignment to the country cooperation strategy and its alignment with the Ministry of Health, the immediate fire properties, uh, priorities and then our alignment with the overall national health sector strategic plan. So all our work is based on what the national health strategic plan guides us to say and also depends on the five-year plans of the current the government which is there. So uh, this is well aligned with the priorities of the Ministry of Health. We, we do not push any things but those things which are discussed at the World Health Assembly, our regional committee meeting and then at the country level based on prioritization of the Ministry of Health, that's what we support. And with that, how do you do you think Timor-Leste is progressing? Yeah, so in terms of public health, you see in 1999, almost 70% of the health infrastructure was destroyed. Okay. And in, after, uh, after 2002, uh, the government has uh, built almost big, uh, one national hospital, five referral hospitals, 69 community health centers and almost 300 health posts. So in terms of infrastructure, great progress has been made. Then in 2004, they decided to have an agreement with the Cuban government to train a thousand doctors. So they have already finished this year to train of these thousand doctors and almost 700 of them have been absorbed in the health system. So infrastructure, human resources. Then uh, in terms of public health, what are the key achievements? Uh, they eliminated leprosy as a public health problem in 2011. Then for malaria, all from almost 250,000 cases in 2004 to zero malaria cases uh, for the last two and a half years. Then they eliminated maternal and neonatal tetanus in 2013. Okay. Then measles elimination in 2018, which very few countries in the region are. And they are on track for elimination of lymphatic filaries in yours. So in the area of public health, there are several achievements. But in terms of clinical services, still Timor-Leste has to send some of these patients to Singapore or Indonesia outside the country because specialized services are not available at the national hospital. Uh, so people who have cancer, people who have heart, complex heart problems or need heart surgery, people who have neurological problems or they need surgery of the brain, they have to go. Uh, cancer detection, cancer surgery, palliative therapy, they have to go outside. So. The care which is available is mostly primary health care and some level of secondary health care at the National Hospital. And there is obviously scope for improvement in the provision of clinical services. So there have been recent improvements. They have a CT scan machine, X-ray now. They are in process of having a medic, uh, MRI machine for diagnosis. So, but there are still many challenges remaining in the to improve the health uh, in terms of clinical care, okay? And also in terms of sustaining these public health achievements, there needs to be a lot of investment in terms of funding, uh, in terms of human resources, uh, and to make sure that the resources are available of on time to the population in the municipal level and at the health post level. So. These are some of the challenges uh, they are facing in terms of public financial management, uh, then some improving the technical capacity of the health professionals to deliver these health services, to have good information systems in place to ensure that if there is, uh, for example, surveillance needs to be stronger. So if there are uh, some cases of uh, some disease which happen in the municipalities, they need to be re reported urgently back to the health center and to the national level so appropriate action can be taken. So, but overall as compared to other countries with the history of 
only 17 years of independence. In the area of public health, there are a lot of achievements, but there's still a lot of uh, work to be done in the provision of clinical services, both secondary and tertiary care services. The UN mission, um, the current one is quite different than the previous ones. Um, in terms of a funding, how do you fund the, all these activities you have mentioned? Yeah, so uh, WHO funding, there are two streams of funding. One is assessed contribution, that is contributions which are received from all governments based on the population and the uh, level of income of the countries, the people, uh, governments contribute to WHO. But that's a very small portion of WHO's overall budget. Uh, 18%. Then majority of the fundings come from other donors, uh, for example like Global Fund, uh, Gavi, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and other donors which provide funding for globally. So for Timor Leste we have certain portion of assessed contribution that is flexible funding which is flexible, a certain amount is available. Then WHO country office has to raise resources based on different projects that we uh, submit. So one of the projects uh, which I mentioned was we got funding of $6.3 million from COICA uh, to, for this Neglected Tropical Diseases Program. Then we also raise funding uh, through GAVI. GAVI is Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization, uh, which has invested a, a lot in Timor Leste. So there is this, for this period of next three to four, three years, four year, three to four years, there's almost eight million dollars available and some of the funding comes through WHO, some to Ministry of Health, some to UNICEF, because UNICEF immunization program, we work closely with UNICEF to support. Then we raise some funding globally, for example, European Union, uh, we have a project on universal health coverage uh, currently here in Timor Leste. Then is, there is another project on pandemic influenza preparedness and response. So we receive some funding for there. So the channels of funding, uh, one is the assessed contribution which I talked, the regular funding which you get, which is a very small portion. Then resources which are mobilized here with our partnership with agencies here. And then some resources which are raised at the global level, where Timor Leste is selected one of the countries based on what we submit the proposals for. So this, this accounts for the funding of uh, the programs which we support the Ministry of Health. Apart from the Ministry, Ministry of Health, who else uh, do you work with? The, who are the other partners of WHO? So as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, social determinants of health are equally important in health. They determine the health. So example for water and sanitation. So we work with the Ministry of Public Works and Water Department there. Then uh, for road safety, we work with other ministries. The Ministry of Education, we work on immunization program because we supported introduction of school immunization uh, just last year. Then also for school health program and health promotion activities. Then Ministry of Finance, for uh, especially in the area of health financing, but also to have advocacy for raising the taxes of tobacco and alcohol, harmful products, uh, how we can uh, increase the taxes so that people resist from consuming these products, but also the taxes raised from this can be utilized for health promotion services. So these are some of the examples of ministries. Then Ministry of Interior Defense, for example, for uh, emergency program. Uh, we are part of the health cluster and the humanitarian country team. So these are the other departments of the Ministry of Health, also for climate change. Uh, then with Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, and because there are zoonotic disease, for example, now a disease currently in news is coronavirus disease. It's a zoonotic disease, a disease which transmitted from the animals to the humans. So we have to work closely with the Ministry of Agriculture and also other zoonotic diseases. So there is a wide range of ministries which we work with, but our primary uh, work is with the Ministry of Health. But we are also trying to uh, 
built and also work with a lot of NGOs, international and national NGOs, especially for our immunization program because uh, they need to have outreach activities. For example, in uh, uh, when we do campaigns, this last year we did a massive uh, campaign in 2019, uh, 18 on immunization, almost uh, a large number of children and uh, up to 15 age were immunized. So we work with not only the UN partners, but uh, international NGO and other ministries because the Ministry of Education is involved in our program on neglected tropical diseases because it looks at also soil transmitted helminthiasis that is worm infestation. So this we could work closely with the Ministry of Education because the program is implemented in the schools and in the community. So the Ministry of State Administration is very much involved. The Sukho chief, the Aldia chiefs uh, in these campaigns both for immunization and both for neglected tropical diseases. So, it's a wide area of uh, minis wide number of ministries which we work with closely in the implementation of the programs. Working with a wide range of partners sometimes can be challenging as well. Um, do you have any? Is there any challenges you're facing as an organization working in Timor Leste? Yeah, we I, we also have a regular health development partners forum where WHO is the co-chair with European Union. So these partners meet on a regular monthly basis to discuss you know, what each organization is doing and how we can collectively support the uh, Ministry of Another. So some of the challenges which we face are you know, timely uh, coordination between Ministry of Health and other, part, other ministries of health uh, and the issues we face in terms of the funding being transferred from the Ministry of Health at the central level to the district level uh, and to the health, community health centers and health posts. So because of some delays in transfer of the funding, uh, the work to be implemented at the lowest level uh, gets hampered. So if funding doesn't come on time, then the outreach activities do not happen on time. For example, immunization then serve rate goes down and then that can lead to uh, an outbreak. So, so these are some of the challenges which we face. You mentioned some of the, the problems, um, the, the health problems uh, Timor, -Leste, Timor Leste has had. Is there anything that you, could, you think could be done better in tackling uh, the problems, the malnutrition problems and uh, other diseases, including non-communicable diseases. Is there, do you think Timor-Leste is doing the right way to, to, call, to cope or at least to prevent this kind of... So I already gave of things which they have done good, okay. There are some of the problems like tuberculosis, TB, remains a big problem in Timor-Leste. The incidence prevalence in this region, they are now, is very high. So, and TB is also uh, associated with poverty, malnutrition, and high use of tobacco. And all of these things are high in, uh, high in Timor Leste. So, we need to work uh, closer with all sectors, but within the Ministry of Health across programs. So, there needs to be better coordination among the TB program and also the maternal and child health program, the nutrition program the HIV program, because all this affects TB. So that's one example. Other is malnutrition, is very complex uh, factor because it's just not only Ministry of Health, it's the availability of food, uh, the quality of food available, the regular uh, safety, water safety, good water availability, clean water, good sanitation. Uh, so these, these mm, cannot be handled only by Ministry of Health. So it requires a lot of coordination. So this is, these are one of the two main areas where there needs to be both investment in terms of funding, but also investment in terms of uh, resources, human resources, uh, and more intersectoral coordination, and also, also uh, under advocacy at the highest level. Uh, people, uh, President, Prime Minister need to be 
get involved in overseeing some of these issues of malnutrition and TB in the country. How does WHO work as one of the UN's agencies? How do you work with the other agencies of the UN um, in, in Timor-Leste? So the UN has uh, the UN resident coordinator uh, and then other UN agency heads. It is called as the United Nations country team. So we, we coordinate our work among the agencies. Uh, especially in the area of health, we work closely with UNICEF in the area of immunization, uh, primary health care, uh, with UNFPA work, work in the area of reproductive health, uh, with UN Women on gender-based violence, and UNFPA on health sector response to gender-based violence, uh, with uh, IOM we are working on TB, TB with ILO on workers' health, uh, especially dengue uh, in among the health workers uh, among the construction workers because one of the causes of uh, dengue is water logging in these where construction is happening and uh, to we need to ensure so these are some of the organizations which we work closely with and coordinate our work with support sometimes there are joint programs for example uh, on disability and injury prevention we have a joint program uh, with other UN agencies and sometimes we pool our resources together both financial and human resources to support the Ministry of Health. So our work with UNFPA is an example of pooling of resources and human resources, uh, financial resources. Uh, we send joint letters to the Ministry of Health based on our work plans which have been agreed and then define what we will support this year and then jointly support these activities. So uh, we, we do a lot of coordinated work with other UN agencies. This has been a very interesting conversation. Thank you very much for sharing all this information and I would like to wish you all the best with your work. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. After hearing all the information about the work of WHO in Timor-Leste from Dr. Rajes, let us also hear some more interesting information from some of the key staff. Hello, how are you? Very good. Would you please tell us your name, your position and your work uh, within WHO? I'm Dr. Sudat Peres. I'm from Sri Lanka. Uh, I came to Timor-Leste in 2013 work in, for the support of the Ministry of Health to work in the immunization program. I'm the technical officer for WHO Country of Timor Leste for immunization. Tell us what you do in your work every day. So my main job is to support the Ministry of Health. My counterpart is the immunization program manager, uh, where there's a small team at the Ministry of Health at national level. And also that uh, every uh, 13 municipalities, there's a one focal point for immunization to work with them to ensure that, that every child of Timor-Leste is vaccinated according to the national immunization schedule. Now currently uh, in Timor-Leste children are getting 10 vaccines against very deadly diseases and uh, so already uh, because of this support provided by during the uh, past 7-8 uh, years that uh, uh, we are getting a lot of results and uh, most of these uh, diseases are now, most of the diseases are not to be seen today and already some diseases are already eliminated from Timor Leste. Um, how is the rating of children getting, immu getting immunization in, in Timor Leste? Is it achieving a good rate of uh, success? So our aim is to reach every child. So it is not only Timor Leste, the globally. So, so every child has a right to protect from uh, these deadly diseases to get the, their fullest uh, survival. Uh, but uh, even though, so our the aim is 100% immunization coverage, due to many many challenges, uh, you know that uh, the immunization start at birth uh, as soon as child was to birth. So they are getting a, a vaccine called BCG vaccine against. Uh, uh, TB, we call BCG, 
then they are getting the dose of polio vaccine to protect them against polio and also this uh, hepatitis B vaccination. They're supposed to get three vaccines at birth. So because that most of our uh, deliveries are now taking place at home and that uh, as soon as the, uh, this delivery happen, almost 91% of the children are getting their, these birth doses. But due to various reasons, so then the child reach uh, six weeks, 10 weeks, then child reach uh, 14 weeks. So they are to get the sub subsequent vaccinations and subsequent doses. And then uh, second year of life, they should get again uh, booster doses. So what will happen is that uh, due to uh, maybe access issues, uh, that means that uh, to, 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 to way that they have to bring these children to the, uh, this immunization post, uh, health post, uh, community health centers, uh, we, we can see that there is a gradual dropout. Even though we start with 95% coverage, when you come to the uh, this uh, nine months when you want to give that measles rubella vaccine, the rate is come to around 80%. And then again, the second year of life at 18 months, so it is again that reaching around 65, 67%. So this is where that we are working very hard uh, with that, uh, uh, not only the Ministry of Health, then uh, again with the different other partners, the community-based organizations, uh, then other government institutions like the Shefi Aldia, Shefi Shuko together sort of uh, encourage mothers so that uh, when this that uh, go into the national immunization schedule, when their children are due vaccination, to bring these children to uh, for vaccination that they are, they are fully protected from these diseases. I've heard that part of the reasons why some people do not want to, do not get immunization or even do not want to get, have their children um, getting immunization is the culture, uh, the traditional or, or the traditional beliefs that um, that they have been living in uh, before be, before our independence. Do you think that's that's true? That there are many reasons uh, to this uh, immunization coverage is to go down. As you said, there's a traditional belief that uh, especially their uh, grandparents, grandmothers think that uh, so we live uh, uh, without any of these uh, uh, the modern interventions, uh, modern medicine. Uh, so we are living a uh, very long time and uh, so why should uh, our children, our grandchildren uh, need all these interventions uh, like a vaccination. So that side of uh, beliefs, beliefs are there. So uh, to counteract that uh, with the WHO, very much is supporting the, our, uh, the Ministry of Health colleagues and also that uh, uh, the uh, municipal level, then CHC level uh, to educate this health staff and also that uh, all the community leaders, especially uh, compared to the, the health staff, you know that the community leaders like this uh, Shefik Suko, Shefi Aldia, then again that uh, uh, church in Timor Leste, uh, so, so almost 95% are Catholics. So among them, that uh, the Catholic Church has a major role uh, in changing this uh, traditional and cultural uh, thinking and behavior, and so that uh, so they can be educated, and so this the children can be protected. So there are many programs uh, going with uh, working with the. Uh, very regularly, so working with these community leaders, church and other sectors to make sure that uh, uh, these messages are going to our parents and grandparents, that value of immunization. What is the role of Dr. Rajesh in, in your work? So uh, Dr. Rajesh Pandya, WHO representative, is uh, my uh, boss and also the supervisor and uh, so that uh, uh, he's the provide the major guidance, uh, the mainly it's a policy level, then it come to the resource mobilization, uh, and also uh, that uh, creating the major coordination, uh, sort of uh, between the Ministry of Health and all the other ministries. So the Dr. Rajesh Pandey as the WHO representative of the put up that platform for us to deliver uh, sort of different subject areas. In my subject area is immunization. How is it like working with him? So it is a pleasure uh, to work with him. Uh, the, so uh, 
as I said, that uh, Timor Leste already achieved uh, a lot of achievement uh, in immunization area. Uh, uh, I said that there are uh, 10 diseases uh, we are currently targeting through vaccination. Uh, one is polio. Timor Leste is free from polio since 1995. No polio in Timor Leste, single case. Then uh, neonatal tetanus. Uh, it's a very clear disease. Children are uh, 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 sort of. Uh, uh, before this vaccination program started, so every thousand children, there were 30 children who died due to uh, this uh, neonatal tetanus. But today, uh, hardly any children are dying in Timor Leste because that all pregnant mothers are vaccinated with tetanus toxoid vaccination. And uh, today, measles is eliminated from Timor Leste. No, last three years, no measles you can find in Timor Leste. No children are dying from measles in Timor Leste. And if you like other deadly diseases like diphtheria, pertussis, rubella, and it is becoming very, very rare. And not only that, uh, because of its guidance and resource mobilization with from the national and as well as the international partners. And so now we are embarking on introducing more and more vaccines, which are very costly, but we were able to uh, sort of uh, with Dr. Uh, Raj's leadership. So we were able to uh, get that support from uh, both uh, international and global partners uh, to introduce uh, very expensive vaccines like rotavirus vaccine, uh, which against diarrheal diseases uh, prevention, uh, then uh, pneumococcal vaccine, uh, that's another major killer of, uh, uh, of infants and young children uh, against pneumonia, we call uh, pneumococcal vaccine. We are now ready to introduce in uh, uh, 2021. And another very important vaccine uh, now already start to use more than 100 countries in the world they are using what is called human papilloma virus. So all the women that uh, uh, cancer of the cervix, uh, we call cancer, cancer of the womb or cancer of the cervix, uh, which is due to virus. So there are very effective vaccines uh, available. So we are planning to introduce in somewhere in 2023. So that, uh, uh, so to bring up uh, Timor Leste in par with any other uh, developed country, uh, and so that uh, all this possible due to the guidance and leadership of uh, Dr. Rajesh Pandeo. So it is a pleasure to work with such a, such a uh, supervisor. Hello, how are you? Uh, hi. First, would you please tell us your name and your position? Yeah, my name is Luis Dos Reyes and uh, I'm the Planning and Program Management Officer. And uh, in our portfolio, we're actually looking after, um, other than planning and program management, um, we also manage the environmental health, that is including water, waste management, sanitation, and climate change. Uh, also, we manage the emergency preparedness and response, and some other programs such as blood safety and health research. In your daily work, what do you do? Uh, in my daily work, I started to work with the WHO since 2006. Um, previously, I worked for the Ministry of Health Timor Leste as the program manager for the Global Funds Against AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria. So, with my position at the WHO, what I do is to make sure that our support to the Ministry of Health is actually in line with the government uh, priority and plans. So my job is to make sure that uh, we develop country cooperation strategy every five years. And out of this, we actually uh, break into two years program. So currently we're implementing our program budget for 2020 and 2021. So in addition to that, uh, we also make sure we develop our detailed work in terms of the budgetary support to the government. We also monitor the implementation of the program. We evaluate the program. So in order to do this, we actually need to coordinate with the partners. Uh, these are uh, all the UN agencies, as well as our main partners, is Ministry of Health and other government ministries as well, and civil societies. What 
is the connection between your work and Dr. Rajesh? Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Rajesh Pandav is actually our uh, WHO country office, the more or less the representative. So, Dr. Rajesh is my uh, first supervisor, so I report to him. Um, I also have staff under me, under our portfolio. I understand that you have been working overseas as well, so would you mind sharing an experience? I think it is in Mozambique. Can you share us a bit of your experience working there? Thank you. As I mentioned, one of my work actually focus on uh, WHO emergency preparedness and response. So since 2006, I've been actually working on this area as well. Um, our main support is to provide our technical support to the Ministry of Health here in Timor-Leste. And uh, we've been attending a number of uh, trainings elsewhere as well. For example, um, I attended training on emergency in Geneva. So in doing that, I'm actually in the roster for emergency. So if any emergency happen, and then they will look into all profiles and if it fits then they will contact me. So for example last year uh, there was a big cyclone um, in Mozambique, it's called uh, Cyclone Idai. Um, it actually happened back in, uh, started from the 14th to 15th of March 2019. So I was contacted uh, to become the team leader for the health cluster and information management there. So I manage 55 organizations, so we make sure that uh, all partners are coordinated because during the cyclone EDI, uh, it was the WHO level 3 emergency which required support from all uh, level of organization within the WHO. So we work with partners, we make sure that we have a strategic planning. We also coordinate with all the NGOs, national and uh, international NGOs in the Mozambique. Uh, we also plan to support the government to deliver the key services to the affected population. We conducted monitoring and evaluation and we also shared the information out to the public about the situation there. So it was actually one of my best experience, even though only one month, but it was very good. Back to WHO team of less than Dr. Rajas. How is it like working with a leader like Dr. Rajas? Uh, I would say because uh, I started uh, with Dr. Alex Anjaparic as the WHO representative back in 2026 and then uh, there were another, I think, two, three WHO representative and Dr. Rajesh came. Um, I think it's important that WHO, uh, uh, they need to maintain the presence here in the country. And with the leadership of uh, Dr. Rajesh, could actually continue the work of WHO in Timor. And um, I can see that from all the partners, from the evaluation that we did, that the partner acknowledged that there are a lot of work that have been actually doing um, with the support of the Dr. Rajesh. And, um, for us, like our national staff here, we feel really grateful because uh, Dr. Rajiv will pro provide necessary support for us in order to improve our technical cooperation with the Ministry of Health and Partners. Hello, welcome to Diplomata. First of all, could you please tell us your name and your position? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Lorito, uh, so I'm uh, looking after non-communicable disease program. I'm the national official, national professional officer for uh, non-communicable disease. And also uh, focal point for uh, several programs like injury prevention and control, mental health and uh, health promotion program. In those positions, what do you do? Um, according to the WHO, uh, the value uh, core function, uh, 
there are six uh, main uh, function uh, for us that we need to provide the, the leadership for, to our college, specifically the country parts. Uh, right now we are working closely to the Minister of Health uh, how we can provide uh, the technical support to them uh, the, um, to ensure of implementation uh, the, the program that we have planned together. This is the first. Uh, second, it is uh, uh, mainly the, uh, to ensure the Minister of Health and also partner to, um, to provide the norms or guidelines that are uh, required in the country, specifically related to the non-communicable diseases. Uh, we can say that like the strategy plan, how we can the, develop the, um, uh, the better uh, the strategy plan uh, for our country, uh, specifically in uh, prevention and control for non-communicable disease. And also uh, some guidelines related to the clinical and uh, the prevention and control. When you say non-communicable disease, what are those diseases? What does that mean? Uh, right, this is the, the, the issue that most of people need to understand. That the non-communicable disease, most of people saying that the chronic disease. There are uh, 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 four main uh, type of the disease, uh, for non-communicable disease, like uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, likely the heart attack and the stroke, that's the one. And the second one is the cancer. There are many cancers, uh, breast cancer, cervical cancer, and oral cancer, and other uh, 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 cancer. The third one is the, the chronic uh, respiratory disease. Uh, this, there are two main diseases, chronic or obstructive pulmonary disease and asthma. Uh, the, third, the fourth one is diabetes. Is, uh, the diabetes, we can say the type 1 diabetes and also type 2 uh, diabetes. And what is the role of Dr. Rajesh in your work? Yeah, the, uh, the Dr. Rajesh, I feel that my, um, uh, can say that a good leader for me, because I started work at WHO, uh, the first supervisor, uh, my first supervisor is uh, Dr. Rajesh. Uh, he was giving me uh, the, um, um, the first supportive, uh, in the implementation of our program as a leaders to provide the, the uh, technical and also I learned a lot from him and how to manage of the program and how to uh, the world link with the government and uh, other partners. This is the value for me and I when I work with the WHO since 2000, uh, 2010. And uh, good for me because I was likely to get this position as a national professor just recently in 2000. And 2008. That was all we can hear from the WHO team in Dili. We wish Dr. Rajesh and his team success. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the program. I'll see you in the next episode of Diplomata. I'm Francis Suni. Bye for now.